Hi guys, YX here and today we are at Bedok Jetty and we'll be doing a style of fishing known as Ajing. Now Ajing has been in Singapore for, I mean it's quite a new fishing style in Singapore. I would say it's probably been around here for about five or five years or less. And I do not know much about Ajing, I haven't tried it before from shore. I did it once offshore, but uh, yeah, so in order to guide me, I have a friend with me and his name is Ismail from Good Guys Fishing, so let's check it out. Hey, what's up bro? <laughs> Okay, so here we can see one of the examples of Aji, right here. Uh, it's a yellow striped cat, or what is locally known as uh, Kuning. It's one of the target species that we, we at least try to catch, but generally speaking, they do not really respond to worms. They would uh, more often than not go for uh, Sabiki. Okay, so uh, we're here at Budo Jetty. Uh, one of the first things to look out for uh, at Budo Jetty or uh, anywhere, any jetty, right, is which direction the ships are facing. So if we take a look uh, over there, we'll see that all the ships are facing in one direction. Generally speaking, it means that the current, where the bow, is, where the bow of the ship is facing, uh, is generally speaking where the current is coming from. And for Ajing, right, you want to look at uh, which direction the current is coming from. It's very, very important because, uh, first of all, we're using very, very small sinkers and you want to try and get your line to the bottom as quick as possible, or at least to the optimal depth. Ajing is a term that uh, uh, is actually a term for Japanese horse macro. And this type of game is actually to target them specifically. And uh, in Singapore, we of course don't have horse macro. We have uh, we have a couple of skets. We, call, we have uh, salah, what is locally known as salah or yellow tail skat. We have uh, smallmouth skat, shrimp skat, and herring skat. What is colloquially known as salah papan. We try to match our tackle to the fish, right? So here we, we are using a very light setup. First of all, you notice that my line is uh, actually a polyester line. I do not use braid, I do not use PE because polyester, right? If you take salt water to be 0, 0 for density, specific density, then polyester, right, is 1.38. So it's quite dense. It will help you to bring your jig head all the way down to the optimal depth and to the bottom. It will also help you with casting. And because of the uniformity of the line, as compared to braid, where it's all woven, right? The sensitivity is also quite, uh, it's vastly improved. Uh. This is actually uh, 2.3 pounds. I prefer to use the heaviest that we have, 2.3 pounds, because we're fishing around structure, and there are baby trivalis around, they'll take you for the structure straight away, right? So we try not to, uh, I mean, some people, hey man, if you want to go for it, can go for the 1.4 pounds, 1.2 pounds, or even 0 0.9 pounds. But I generally stick to 2.3 pounds when I'm around structure. The setup I'm using is actually a, a 34 uh, advancement, 8.0. It's an 8 foot rod. Pretty heavy for RJ, I would say. All right, the rating is from uh, 1 gram to uh, 15 grams. Okay, it's a pretty big range. I can use this for light rock fishing or I can use it for arching as well. It serves a dual purpose. And the other good part about long rod is that of course distance, right? That's a given. But we can also, uh, once the fish starts to dart into the structure, you can actually push the rod forward to actually um, jack the fish out of the structure, right? To prevent them from actually going in. So the reel I'm using is a 2004H uh, Daiwa Theory. Right, it's a pretty decent, decent reel. Uh, I prefer the, I like the color a lot. Yeah, but you want to have a very smooth drag, right? Drag is very, very important when you're fighting this fish. Not using much, not at all, I think. Uh, well, for setup, that's it. Okay. As for lures, this is what we use for uh, catching RJ. It's a very simple setup, right? It's basically a jig hit and a worm. That's it. Okay, we catch them one at a time. Now what I have here is my bread and butter uh, setup. It is a decoy Rocket Plus jig head. 
This is a 1.8 gram jig head with a size uh, with a number 8 hook. It comes with a number 10 hook as well. But sometimes I find that the hookup braids are not very good. Mm -hmm. For Aji, what they do is they will suck it up, right? And they'll spit it out within a matter of milliseconds. Mm -hmm. And with a smaller hook, you don't always get that good hook set. Okay? I've paired it with a 34 Octopus Junior. I use this constantly, this particular setup. I'll show you how we rig it. Okay? It's very, very important that you rig it properly because if, if the rigging is off, the swimming action will be off as well. So you want to be really careful. There's, there's little grooves, right? Look, they've already put input for us. You just want to get it as straight as possible so it'll swim well. Okay? Just want to get a nice. Sit, at least it sits straight and swim really well. Okay, so this I hope will entice at least something to give us a, give us a bite. Okay, guys. So what uh, Ismail and the other AG fanatics normally do before they start a fishing session is that they will go around and clean up the fishing area a while, which I think is a really good practice, and you guys should do it. So. We're gonna start cleaning up now. Keep our fishing areas clean. Okay, one of the reasons we clean up is because of things like this. Sabiki is a very commonly used uh, type of fishing in uh, Guru Jetty. So when they discard their hooks everywhere, people are gonna get hooked and we don't want that to happen. We want everybody to be able to fish safely without any injuries, right? So please, hooks right away. So for casting, um, as you can see, the wind is blowing in the same direction the current is coming, the same direction as the current, right? And for arching, you want to cast against the wind coming. Poses a little bit of a challenge because our jig heads are so light, right? So what we try to do is we wait for windows when the wind stops blowing, it right? doesn't blow as hard, right? And we just take our shots. After every cast, what I try to do is to pull the line, make sure the drag is set right. And the other thing is, because this is polyester and it has memory, right, and, and I'm casting against the wind, the worst thing you can get is a wind knot. Because it's so thin, you can't like pull it straight, it'll break, and you just end up wasting a lot of line, right? So we try to like pull it out, pull it, pull the drag out. We try to see if there's any like, uh, resistance, right? If there's no resistance, it's good. So every cast, try to cast, pull the line, just to make sure there's no resistance, right? Or the, the fact that the line hasn't gone into the spool. I'm trying to pull the filler, I'm trying to pull the filler. He's trying to, he's trying to go in. Let's try to bring him up before he wraps himself up. Let's see if, he can do it. if, I, if it's out of the water. Okay, so I'm going to give this to the. Okay, you want? Huh? What? Okay, you put it on the floor. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. It's a very nice feeder. I believe it's a big eye trivali, maybe one. Right, it's a bit too small to keep. Of course you can eat them, quite tasty. But I think it's hooked well enough to okay, it's good to release it. Alright guys, so we ended up today's session not very good but we still managed to get one pelagic and one so-called pelagic. <laughs> But uh, we do another arching video again. It's really, really cool, technical type of fishing. So yeah, catch you guys next time. Bye.